Hello folks and welcome. So I have a new video for you on Pop! OS File Manager. If you've seen some of my older videos, you may see some new tips and tricks today. Uh, is uh, What kind of um, user is this for? Well, everyone. But I'm going to film it from the aspect of uh, for a new user. But certainly anyone can use this information. So I'm going to be doing lots of tips and tricks with your keyboard and uh, computer mouse scroll wheel. Now I'm using a tower computer with a fairly standard computer mouse. Uh, if you need to know the model, it's a Logitech M585, standard scroll wheel. And uh, the keyboard is fairly generic also. Um, and I'll maybe touch a little bit about touchpads in here, but uh, generally just want you to understand I'm using a regular computer mouse with a scroll wheel on it. All right. Today I'm going to be talking about the file manager. And um, I am filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. A lot of your YouTube players play in the 460 modes. That's a lot less screen res than I'm filming in. So uh, for you folks that like to have those uh, minimize, maximize button, you know, that plus or minus thing, I'll also talk about those. Are they necessary? No, because I'm going to talk about a lot of things uh, manipulating Windows, but I'll certainly show you how to install those. So I'm going to use Alt and F4 and continue. Again, this is all about the file manager today. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the window itself. Now I chose this mouse pointer and it's a non-standard one. It's called Radioactive and I'll even show you where it's installed later. But uh, it has a, a feature where it works very well with uh, dark themes. And more importantly, it has this uh, feature that it points to a line. The line represents the top of this box or window. So your mouse pointer, if you're going to do this, these tips, has to be below this line. And I'll talk about the, um, the preferences for this file manager next. So double click. That's one way. Click and hold and push up makes it full screen. Click and hold and pull down. I can also resize the window multiple ways. I can do it this way, or I can resize it this way. I can also move that, but I prefer actually not to do that. I just usually click and hold and then drag it back and forth. The file behavior, I'm sorry, the behavior for this, all these actions that I'm showing today is done with double click. If you flip this over to single, you may not get the same desired effects. Okay, just to let you see what my settings are. All right, so can I do this over here? Absolutely. Click and hold, drag it up. Click and hold, pull it down. Double click, double click, double click, or double click over here. Again, it doesn't matter. So for you folks that like those little keys up here, let me talk about a tool that you can install or at least check to see if you have it installed. If not, head over to Pop Shop. So open up your show applications and type in TW and look for tweaks. You can see how it's spelled. All my videos have timelines and chapters, and if you don't have the time to in, uh, watch this video today in its entirety, hit subscribe. That way you can watch it when you have time. And I have over 200 videos on all kinds of subject matter. So let's open up tweaks. There are a couple of things about tweaks that you can do, and I'll talk about the window title bars first. You slide these puppies on, and then you get the two buttons. You, you just saw them appear in my file manager also. This is also the box that I use to activate this mouse pointer. I install it in a different location, which I'll show you in the file manager, but it's activated here. This is your default cursor or mouse pointer. I like to use this one for this demo. So now that you know, you can use tweaks to install these keys. Again, do you need them? Probably not, but in case you want them, How's that? Double click, double click, click and hold, push it up, pull it down. All right, all kinds of different ways. Now, let me continue with the hamburger menu. So if you're missing the sidebar, that's probably why somebody misclicked on that maybe, but click, walk over to your hamburger menu and just make sure that's active if you wanna see that. This of course is your shortcut to your folders and other locations like internal hard drives, external hard drives, USB sticks, and etc. All right, so we also have above that is show hidden files and folders. Another name for folders in Linux is directories. So you can either click that or use control H. I'll be showing lots of keyboard shortcuts. So here's a list of some of them. Again, some of them. Some of them are 
in here and some of them not so much. So you may want to pay attention and watch the whole video to get some of those tips and tricks. I was talking to a Microsoft user of many years um, and he was not aware of some of the keyboard shortcuts. Um, some of them he was aware of but wasn't aware of all of them. And I find that amazing that I thought most of this was all common knowledge but you know it all depends on your experience level. Control P he didn't realize was your print command. That one I, I really almost rolled over on. <laughs> but anyways, a uh, very common one is Control X, C, and V, and A. Cut, copy, paste, and select. I'll show you different ways to select. Control and the plus key, Control and the negative key. So there's not lots of different things. So I'm going to show you a horrible, horrible screenshot that I got off the internet, off the keyboard. I'm not sure if the white one will work better, but I got it partly cut off. So let me uh, go full screen and uh, I will resize this as far as I can get it. I know this is out of focus, folks, and I can see it on my screen also. But in general, the proximity of your keys on your keyboard, Control key, Alt key, possibly two, they're on the side of your space bar, and possibly a, another Alt uh, Control key here. I'm gonna be using a lot of combination of Alt and F4 to close windows. I'll also use the Alt key and the scroll wheel on my computer mouse and the control key also on my computer mouse scroll wheel. I'll also be using combinations like control and the plus key, minus key, and the zero, just to name a few. As long as that's clear, let's talk about some icons. So you can uh, click the little arrow down here and you can certainly hit the minus, minus, minus. This takes all day in my book. You can also use the control key on your keyboard and hit plus, plus, plus or control zero for 100%. You can also hit the control, hold it down and hit the minus. I'm holding down the control key while I'm doing this, right? Right folks, hopefully you understood that. I can also hold down the control key since I have a USB based computer mouse with a scroll wheel on it. Again, my model number is Logitech M585 if you're curious. I'm scrolling back and forth, that's all I'm doing. Holding down the control key while scrolling back, scrolling forward, scrolling back and in between. Okay, so a couple ways of doing that. Again, there's several keyboard shortcuts to explain this. So over here, I have some pictures. So if I'm wanting to use some of these keyboard combinations on scroll wheel things, let's open up an image. I'm gonna double click on this uh, guy here with a funny looking hat with a bunch of paint coming out of it and what it looks to be. So we have the standard click, zoom in and out. We also have the little bar that you can change the zoom levels. All right, and then you can also use control zero for 100%. Hold down the control key and hit plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. Now, if you hold down the control key and try to scroll on your computer mouse, it just jumps around like this. That's not what you want. Hold down your alt key, hold down your alt key and then scroll with your computer mouse, resizing the image all the way down to 2% and as far as 2000. Oh, it's a lot of scrolling, I know. So I'm just gonna bring his arm in view and let go of the Alt key, Alt key, not the Control key, Alt key. And then I'm gonna grab and center that image. In other words, click and hold. And then I'm gonna push down and hold the Alt key and scroll forward. Again, you could have two Alt keys. I'm using now I'm using the, the right one, and now I'm using the left Alt key. It doesn't matter, as long as you're holding it down and scrolling. If you don't like it, then click. Or you can use Control plus or minus, or Control and zero for 100%. All right, so this image here doesn't have much exposure and all that good stuff, but some things you can have digital information brought in also. All right, so I can use the X in the corner. I can also use Alt and F4 to close that. So Alt and F4 it is. So I have a digital image here that was shot by my wife. It's um, our backyard. It's named 15.jpg.jpg. That's a perfectly legitimate file name. I just threw that up there to have a little fun. Okay, I can go full screen. But anyways, I'm gonna double click on the image. And the same thing, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and scroll in to let you see the frozen tundra. And then I'll use the Control and the zero to go 100%. And that's still not good enough, so I'm going to switch over to the Alt and scroll backwards. So now you can have black borders. 
But more importantly, I want you to notice that it has more information than the previous image I just showed. This actually says camera on it, iPhone XR, iPhone 10 in other words. Here's the data was shot, exposure, all the other particulars and the image size and also show details. Here's some image data. In other words, it's got other goodies, okay? So a lot of times when you bring in your own images of your grandkids, your kids, your friends, your pets, uh, maybe wallpapers off the internet sometimes, it has uh, digital information, your file manager can display that. So your file manager can do a lot of things. And I have some weird wallpapers too. The guy's trying to escape out of his keyboard here. But more importantly, we can right click and make anything wallpaper, pretty much. Okay, now I'm going to talk about uh, file manipulation. I'm going to basically get rid of that so I have an empty download area. And uh, let's talk about selecting folders and files. Another name for folders in, direct, in, in Linux is directories, but we're going to stick with the name folders. So we can certainly click on an individual image or file or folder and right click and copy those, Control C. Or we can cut them, Control X. But you can also select uh, multiple objects by clicking one, hold down the control key, click, click, click. It doesn't have to be sequential. It could be in any random order. We can also select them as groups. Hold down your mouse, click and hold and drag a line through these. And you can back that up. As soon as I touch it, it triggers. So I'll leave this as a group of three. And then I'm gonna hold down my control key and I'm gonna select the top three here as part of this group and right click and copy these. You can see the butterflies highlighted still. And I'll paste these over here. I also can use control V. Here's the butterfly by the way. So I'll just leave this folder open for a second. If I needed to uh, delete an image out of the group here, uh, let's get rid of that one. I hit delete. If I change my mind, it's control Z. Control A selects everything. It's the same thing as me drawing a box around these. Does it have to be a box? No, I can just click and drag a tiny line through them. Or it could be a box, that's up to you. I'm gonna hit delete. Let's go back to pictures, because I just copied these. So if you're doing this in groups, let's uh, start at the top here. I'm gonna select these. As soon as I move over to the next group, it triggers them and I'll back it up. You don't have to be fully right through them. You can just touch them. But let's say you went across and you went like that and you selected that wallpapers and you went, I don't want that being part of my group that I'm copying this to a USB stick, for instance. Then hold down your control key and deselect the ones you don't want. Now I'm going to hit control C and walk over to downloads and paste these with a control V. You noticed it did not copy the folder. All right, so control A and delete. So there's many ways to manipulate files. See, I still have an undo. It's just waiting for me to do a, an undo. But So if I wanted to go with a group in the center, I could do it this way. And then I'll pick the bottom row also if I wanted to. See, these are highlighted currently. You can see the difference. Hold down your control key and select. I don't want that cruiser, so I back it up one. Now that's part of this group. And I can do the control X for cut or control C for copy and paste that onto a USB stick if I want. There's lots of different ways to manipulate files. Do them as a group. You want the folder thing, click that. Want another image to go with it, hold down the control key, click. You want another one, click, click, click. Now only these are selected. And you can do the control X, which is cut, or the control C for copy. Clear? Okay. Talk about documents. I have a couple of PDFs here, and I'll pick the printer one. Okay, so um, it's currently left where I left it last. So I'm going to hold down the Control key and just kind of point at this area right here, and then I'm going to scroll in with my computer mouse. Now I can see what that is. I let go of the Control key and I can scroll normally. I can use the arrows and page up and down too on my keyboard. Holding down the Control key, scrolling back to dinky, small, 5.4% in this case. Holding down the control key, scrolling forward. 
all the way up to whatever percent that this PDF will go into. And then I'll let go of the control key and scroll normally. See, the PDFs are a little bit different than the image viewer when you are holding down your Alt key and scrolling. Let's take a text file. Now, I'm not going to use the standard text editor. I'm going to open this with Kate. I prefer that. And if you want to install uh, stuff like that, you can go to Pop Shop. But I prefer Kate for a reason. Um, so Kate has a, a nice attribute that uh, I can resize the text when I'm filming in a hurry. So now you can see what that text looks like and I can scroll backwards to make it dinky. What exactly am I doing? I'm holding down the control key. Here's a mini thumbnail of it, by the way. Holding down the control key while scrolling forward and back to resize the text. I'm not resizing the font. I'm resizing what you can see on the screen. I will go full screen. Remember, you can click and drag, double click, click and hold, click and hold and push up. Okay, however you want to do this. Holding down the control key, scrolling back and forth. Control key, scrolling back and forth on this text file, not Alt key. Okay, that was done in the image viewer. So there are several ways you can look at files this way. You also have hidden files and folders, Control H, very common command with all modern Linux file managers. This folder I normally create on all Linux distributions. If it's not there, I put mouse cursors on it on all distributions. It's called radioactive. Your standard mouse cursor is located actually in here in the USR share icons folder. There's lots of folders in here. That one is protected by root permissions in, in here, the USR share icons folder. That's where your standard mouse cursor is installed. I used to show that on my previous channel. I don't anymore. The ownership of this folder is whatever the logged in user is. You can manually create that folder. I have lots of videos on my YouTube site. Dot icons, I'm sorry, dot icons is a hidden uh, directory or folder. The, the dot bash history is a hidden file. Now you see it, control H, now you don't. Born again shell history, it's the uh, history of the commands I punched into terminal that's stored here. Just an example of showing hidden files and folders. So if you ever see that, you can either go to the hamburger menu and click this. You can see it's checked or use control H, your choice. Okay, pulling this down, pushing this up, double clicking, double clicking. Selection in here can be done by clicking and dragging, can be done by clicking, holding down the control key and, and selecting random objects. Doesn't matter if they're files or folders. Okay, I'm going to show you another tip here. Um, you can also split this in half by hitting control T. It makes two panes. What is this good for? They're currently the same. I will click this um, internal hard drive. You can simulate that as a USB stick. And I'll click downloads to make sure that it's empty. And this is my USB stick, for instance. And I wanted to bring in some music from another computer. And I copied that on the USB stick and uh, let's say these are WMAs, they're music files nonetheless. I could uh, click and hold and drop it in there. I could have also right click on it and hit copy or cut. Another way, this is confusing to some users. So I'm going to do this in a different way. So I'm going to close this tab and I'm going to get rid of that. And we're going to do this slightly different. I'm going to do this manually so you can see how it's done. I'm going to make a box and then I'm going to hit control N as in Nancy to make another box. And then I'm going to click um, which uh, it doesn't matter which box does what, but uh, I will use this side to do the demo drive. I know it's an internal drive, but just think of this as a USB stick. Also, the icons can be resized independently from this box. This is still downloads and it's empty. And this is the working box that I'm working with. So same thing, I will use music as the example and I'll pick something different and uh, it only has one song on that one. So when I click and drag and drop it, because I'm going from my um, USB stick or internal hard drive, whichever you prefer, into home folder downloads. 
When I click and drag and drop, this is considered a copy. So you can now see it's in downloads. Now if I click this screen here and change this to um, music, again, these are resized independently. If this exists in here, it'll complain that it's a duplicate, but I don't think it is. So now I'm going from my home downloads folder into home music. This is very typical of how you would transfer files. That just moved that file from downloads into music. Can you do that with folders? Absolutely. Now, why is it actually cutting and pasting them? Because you're going from your internal folders to internal folders. When you go from other devices like internal hard drives, external hard drives or USB sticks with two boxes, you are copying with a normal click and drag. You can use other key combinations, but the general click and drag is considered a copy process. Does that make sense? Click and drag. I'm not doing anything special with my keyboard. And I don't want to confuse you by adding some other uh, derivatives in there because you certainly can't. If you want to keep it simple, you want it to do a cut and paste, then you can right click on the object and do the cut and copy and cut. Or cut and copy, I should say. Okay, to make it simple for you. When you start getting used to this, you can add some more additional fancy functions, is what I call it. All right. I'm in the 21st minute, and uh, I'm just going to rehash this. So double click, double click, click and hold, pull it straight up, pull it straight down. Right click, resize. Adding these keys, you need what tool? You need this tool installed, tweaks. Click that. Title bars are down here. Don't like the buttons here? Switch them over to that side if you like. That's also done in here. If you decide to add a mouse pointer, you saw in one of my videos and you're not too sure, they are installed in this folder here. And I do recommend that you probably watch one of my videos on how to do this, to add these things. Because I also have on my YouTube site a link for you to a nonprofit website that has over 700 of these kind of guys. Again, you can watch any of those videos. They all get installed usually in the same locations, if not all. They're, they're in dot icons and uh, USR share icons is normally the two locations that any Linux file system gets them installed. Picking them, however, is done differently for different systems. This one happens to be done with using tweaks because there's no selections in your settings for this currently. I'm sure that'll be fixed sooner or later, but it's done in here. Again, this is your default cursor. I'm using this one. I didn't want to make any more information about this mouse cursor, but thank you for watching.